When I was Bishop of Chelmsford, serving East London as well as Essex, a large congregation of Bulgarian Pentecostal Christians knocked on the door of one of our vicarages in Newham, asking whether they could hire the church building for their worship on a Sunday afternoon. The vicar said yes, this was readily agreed. However, to the vicar's amazement and probably slight consternation, a few months later, um, they again knocked on the door, but this time, reckoning that there was, after all, only one Christian church, asked whether their congregation could join the Church of England Sunday congregation and form one community. Basically, they were asking to join the Church of England. And the church said yes. And, to cut a long story short, on one very happy Sunday morning a few months later, I turned up at this church to baptise some and to confirm around 80 people. And this little inner city church, with its fairly small congregation, found that overnight its congregation more than doubled in number by this huge influx of Bulgarians who'd settled in this country, were working in the east end of London, and were followers of Jesus Christ. Many of them didn't speak English very well. It meant monumental change for this little church community. The whole culture of their church was transformed overnight. But they said yes to becoming a different sort of church, enriched by the presence of people from a different culture. The following year, I was again visiting the church and was chatting with one of the church wardens after the service, a man who'd come to the UK from Jamaica in, I think, the 1960s. He was part of what we think of as the Windrush generation. I spoke about the warmth and the welcome that his church had given to this Bulgarian community, how they'd opened their doors and how, if I was honest, I was surprised, reckoning that most churches would not have given such a welcome to a large group of strangers, a group that outnumbered them, and a group that meant that their church would change. He looked me up and down and said, Bishop, we weren't going to make the same mistake twice. For he remembered when he came to this country as a faithful, and loyal Anglican, and he was not made welcome in our churches. Well, it's a remarkable story. It's a story of a church embracing difference and diversity and being enriched by it. But it's also a story that can help us face up to the difficult history of racism in our church in those times and in those days when we haven't and didn't make people welcome. In the last year, the report from Lament to Action, which I commissioned with the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Racial Justice Commission that follows from it, asks us to address our historical failings and our present challenges and build a church that is truly welcoming of everyone and truly reflects the diversity of the communities we are called to serve. And today is Racial Justice Sunday. I therefore hope we can all be inspired by the example of that little church in East London that welcomed in a whole community. The biblical vision is of a church where every nation, every tribe, every people, and every language is gathered into God's kingdom. And in this Diocese of York, we are called, as we live Christ's story, to be part of that, that all-embracing, beautiful, diverse story. Therefore, as part of our response to From Lament to Action, we are setting up in the Diocese a racial justice group. It's part of our commitment under Living Christ's Story, to be a church of missionary disciples, which is younger and more diverse. This group will promote racial justice across the diocese. And my hope and prayer 
is that as they begin to do their work, we will see an increase in vocations ordained and lay from people of much greater diversity, that as a diocese we will begin to look more like the communities we serve, identifying the barriers that prevent us from being the diverse church God is calling us to be. Please join me in prayer today for racial justice. Remember those who have been and are excluded from our church. In our Bible reading from St Luke's Gospel, Jesus speaks powerful and challenging words. Blessed be the poor, blessed the hungry, blessed those who weep, they will be filled, they will laugh. But he also says, woe to those of us who get things wrong that we will be put in our place. So let us be truly penitent for the failings of our church, to be that church, which is the church for everyone. Let's face up to the failings of the past and let's strive to be that diverse, beautiful church where everyone is welcome and where everyone is gathered in. Amen.